Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm going to show you very important calculation about the band gap and optical properties of the nanomaterial by using very simple technique that is called UV visible spectroscopy. You know, UV visible is one of the electromagnetic radiation in which the electronic transitions are occur. And these electronic transition are shown over here. It may be from sigma to sigma star or pi to pi star or n to sigma star or n to pi star. So I will be using very useful calculation and demonstrate how to calculate the band gap of the nanomaterial. So here actually uh, the dependent of the uh, band gap on the size of the nanomaterial is very important. And uh, I have shown over here uh, the behavior between the band gap and the particle size of the nanomaterial. So it may be a red shift or the blue shift. So let's start from here. So if you uh, reduce the size of the nanomaterial, that means simultaneously there is a decrease in the band gap. But and this is called the red shift. And, but this is going to happen with the certain particle size. And this is going to depend and vary from uh, uh, material to material. And this is called the critical size. So with the critical size, when you moving uh, again towards the less particle size, now there is the increase in the band gap. And this is called the blue shift. So uh, with the decrease in band gap, it may be due to the delocalization of the conduction band. So when the conduction band expands, there is a decrease in the band gap. So uh, the reason for the blue shift uh, with the uh, least particle size, this is around, uh, it, it depends uh, between uh, 10 to 20, and sometimes we call it the 10 nanometer. So, there is the further splitting of the energy level. So the band gap is going to increase with the decrease in the particle size. So moving towards the calculation, I'm going to use the wood and talk equation. And for this, you have a simple UV visible spectra. That means you need the change in absorbance with the change in the uh, wavelength. So you can easily get this data from the UV visible spectroscopy. And this is the one of the form of the wood and talk equation. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, similar to the, the first one. And uh, uh, I am going to use over here uh, this uh, wood and talk equation with the the direct allowed transition, the value of n would be one over two. And when you put the value of one over two, it will become square and square will be equal to this. And uh, here I will be using three important uh, way to calculate the band gap because it depends from uh, material to material. And sometimes uh, you have the difficulty to calculate the value of the alpha, which is the uh, absorption coefficient. And then you can use three alternative way how to calculate the uh, alpha and put the value over here. And then you can easily get the value of the band gap. So let's start with the calculation where I will show you the detail uh, how to calculate the band gap. So this is the, actually, uh, the first you have to get the data by using the UV visible spectroscopy. And uh, this is the, uh, uh, that was, this is the data you have uh, uh, put over here. This is the wavelength. And uh, there's a the change in absorbance with the change in the wavelength. This is just the UV visible uh, uh, spectrum. Uh, you have to export into Excel or the origin. And then let's see actually what is the equation. And the equation over here is, uh, this is the wood and talk equation. As I have shown before, this is the actually the main equation. These three are the, the same equations, but uh, just for clarity, I have put all these equations over here. 
we will uh, be using this equation to calculate the band cap. So for here, what important is over here is you have to calculate the alpha and h and mu. Alpha is the absorption coefficient, mu is the frequency, h is the plant constant. Again, this E, G is the actually the band gap. So now <clears throat> moving toward the calculation. So one by one, you have to calculate uh, the, uh, all the parameters. Let's suppose what is the, the value of us, the value of alpha. Alpha you can calculate by using this relationship. This is the 2.303 into 1000 into rho, rho is the theoretical density of your material and you can get it from the literature. And then this is the L, L C and M, C is the concentration, M is the molecular mass and M is the, the, the path length. So you have to put the values over here and then get the value of the alpha. So for uh, this, uh, just for the, uh, to keep it very simple, I have calculated over here, this is the theoretical density for the cerium oxide uh, as in this case. So first you have to calculate the, the upper uh, values, 2.3 multiplied by 1000 multiplied by rho, rho is the density, theoretical density, and this, the value is this. Now you can calculate the, the lower values, which is L multiplied C multiplied by M, and L is the path length, which is one uh, centimeter, and uh, C is the concentration of your material, cerium oxide, I suppose we have prepared 0 0.02 molar, and the molecular weight of this one is the 172.12. So this is the, the calculation of uh, these will be like this. And uh, this is the calculation of uh, this figure will be 3.4424. Then you have to divide this by this according to this formula. And this is the value of 4827.5761. So this will remain the constant throughout the calculation because all parameter I have used over here are the constant. So let's start with the calculation. Now, what is left, uh, H mu is left, and this is the, uh, the only you have to calculate. And then I will show you in the Excel file how to calculate the values. So this is the data you have taken from the uh, your visible spectroscopy. Uh, this is the wavelength in nanometer and absorbance. Uh, absorbance doesn't have any unit. And now you have to calculate the uh, H mu first, and uh, this is the absorbance, this is the wavelength, and I will be using very simple equation. This is the E is equal to H mu according to the Planck's equation, and uh, where mu is the frequency, which is uh, equal to C over lambda, that means H C over lambda, that will give you the the value of the E and E is the H mu. Actually, you are calculating the H mu and H mu will be equal to a C over lambda. H is the constant, which is the Planck constant. C is the velocity of the light, which is a constant. And uh, this is the wavelength lambda, which is variable. And when you just put all these value, uh, it will become one, two, four, zero over lambda. And uh, now you can calculate easily what would be the value of the H mu. And this, this is actually, I have used the conversion factor to convert the wavelength into the uh, uh, nanometer from the unit to the energy unit, which is the electron volt, because we have to calculate the band gap in the electron volt. So simply you can use uh, this conversion factor. There is no need to worry about the calculation so again, I'm using uh, over here. This is the uh, actually the uh, E over H mu over C. That means you have to calculate the x-axis by using uh, this equation. So for here, you have to just divide the wavelength again, which is given over here for each of the values. 
uh, with this one, one to four zero divided by this one, this will give you the value of 1.12. Then you have to calculate the value of alpha and alpha, I have already uh, shortened this relationship. Alpha is this, alpha is this, this value is 4827.5 and what is left, absorbance is left. So you have to just calculate or to multiply this factor with the absorbance of each wavelength. And this is the alpha. Alpha is the uh, 4827.5 as indicated uh, over here. You have to multiply with the absorbance and the absorbance are given over here. This is the B4, B4 is this absorbance. You have to multiply this one with this factor and this will give you the value of the alpha. Now the next step is you have to calculate the alpha H square. You have calculated the alpha, you have calculated the H mu and just you have to multiply all these two to get the value of the alpha H mu. Then you have to take the square of the alpha H mu because according to the equation, you have to take the square. And then uh, this is your uh, the value. Actually, this is the final value. I have taken exponent seven as a common so that uh, uh, your y axis would be more reasonable because it doesn't depend on the, the value or by taking the common. So almost you have done the calculation. Now you have to plot a graph. And this is your x axis, h mu. And the alpha h mu square is your y axis. And this is simple to plot a graph. You can take this, you can select both of them. And then uh, you can plot a graph. It should be a scattered line like this. And later on, we can further refine. Actually, I have already plotted, so I'm going to delete this one and uh, I'm going to show you the, the rest of the calculation. So here, uh, this is the graph I have already plotted over here. This is the same as I have shown you before. Now, how to calculate the, the band gap of the nanomaterials for uh, which I have taken uh, over here as a cerium dioxide. Now this is the, there are the two uh, curves. So you have to take the straight line. You have to draw a straight line covering uh, this line towards the X axis and where it is going to touch that would be the, the band gap. So this graph shows that there are two band gaps. So one is there. And the second one would be here. By here, you can extrapolate towards the x-axis. You will get the, the second band gap. And this is actually, I have plotted over here. Like here, you have to draw a straight line on this graph and on this curve, where they are going to touch. These are the band gap of your material. Similarly, because there are the different materials we have used. So similarly, you can do with the C and uh, with the B as well. Now, important point over here is how to calculate the band gap if there is some issue with the concentration or molecular mass of your material, like in case of the graphene or the other materials you are using uh, uh, for the synthesis. So I have used over here to other alternative ways to calculate the alpha. The rest will be the same, only there is the variation of the alpha. So you can calculate the alpha by using this equation, which is the alpha will be equal to four pi k over lambda. K is the absorption index or simply the absorbance. You can put the absorbance for each of these steps as we have used before. And uh, for each of the absorbance, there will be a wavelength. So you have to put the wavelength over here. You can easily get the value of the alpha. And the third way is this, uh, the alpha is there. Alpha will be equal to 2.303, x prime minus seven into A, A is the absorbance. These are the constant, just put the value of absorbance and you can get the value of the alpha. And uh, again, 
you have to use this relationship alpha h mu square against the h mu as we have done before. So you can calculate the band gap by using uh, this absorption coefficient or by using this equation or by using this equation. So at the end, I'm going to show you the papers where we have calculated this band gap so, you, so that you can take this paper as a reference. So the first one is the, <clears throat> Is this paper? So everything is explained over here. This is the same equation, wooden top equation. This is the absorption coefficient. Actually, the value of n matters, and uh, this value may be uh, uh, one by two. This is mistakenly written over here. This is the value maybe one by two, or two, three by two, or the three for the direct allowed, indirect allowed, direct forbidden, and indirect forbidden. So here I have shown you the calculation by using the value of one by two, which is for the direct allowed transition. And uh, this is the paper. Actually, I have explained and the values are given over here. You can use them as a reference for your calculation. And this is the paper uh, in which we have did a lot of calculations. And uh, this is the reference of the paper. Now, for the other, uh, the value of uh, absorption coefficient we have used, and uh, this is given another paper, and this is recently published. We have used this absorption coefficient to calculate the uh, uh, value of the band gap, and this is published in this paper, and this is uh, published uh, in this year recently published and uh, you can also use this as a reference. So in conclusion, I have shown you the three ways to calculate the band gap. Actually, this is a very simple technique and you can use this technique to calculate the band gap of your nanomaterial and uh, to determine the optical properties and where you can link the band gap with the particle size and you can show the relationship where whether your material is giving you the red shift or the blue shift. This is all about uh, the, uh, the presentation and see you in the next office.